What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Uh, we've got some some weather patterns starting to change here in North Carolina, and I know definitely in other parts of the country, other parts of the East Coast, um, we're starting to see a lot of change, especially further north. South of us, still very warm, very hot. Really the most, um, it's been pretty hot, pretty hot September here so far and a very hot late August. Uh, but we are close to cooler temperatures. We're close to fall. We're close to some fish patterns seriously changing up. Um, and so this is, I consider, an important time in this podcast to kind of really help y'all um, stay ahead of the game, start thinking about these transitionary times, what these fish are going to be doing now, and what they're going to be doing as we start to see some cooler weather temperatures pushing in. Uh, we got really hot water still. Um, we've got really hot days still, but we have had cooler mornings and cooler evenings, and uh, that will start to drop that water temperature a little bit, at least for part of the day, and it is going to get these fish to start thinking about Migrating, it's going to get these fish start to think about um, changing up their patterns. Um, and so excited to kind of start going over that with y'all here on Eastern Current. Uh, before we get into today's podcast, if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, please go check it out. Um, I, I upload some extra content on there, some weekly little tips, uh, talking about different um, things that are working for me out on the water. Michael will be doing some of that with me as well. Um, and it's just a great way to uh, help support this podcast financially as we invest a lot of time in it. And we really, really, really appreciate that. So um, thank you all for those of y'all that are there on Patreon. We love y'all. Um, also, go check out our, our private Facebook group. Uh, it's just a, a group for listeners to go and, and kind of share their, their fishing experiences together with other listeners. Um, and a good place to find charter captains for different areas along the East Coast and Gulf Coast as they post on there. And um, we just want to thank y'all for being parts of those communities. So um, without, oh, and, and one more thing, the next podcast that we bring on, I will be announcing um, our sponsor. We're going to have a full sponsor for the podcast. Um, so we're excited to, to share that with y'all. Um, but that will be in the next podcast. Um, but I'm going to bring on my boy, Michael. What's going on, man? Not much. How are you today? Oh, doing good. Doing good. I, uh, I'm excited to talk about, I guess we should drop the ball on what we're talking about, but like late summer, <laughs> early fall speckled trout fishing. Um, the flounder, the fl- I can't talk about flounder anymore. I'm about, I'm about floundered out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear and, that. And I am, I'm that like trout bug is starting to really itch, starting to chirp and itch that. So, oh, yeah. um, have you kind of started to feel the same, those same wheels turning when you're on the water? Like, where can I look for some trout this morning? Like you go out there <laughs> thinking top water redfish and then you're like, Ooh, maybe trout. Yo, well, I I started last weekend hitting like those one or two transition spots that I know of that when they start showing up there, and I finally got a couple on top water, and I was like, all right, it's about to happen. Yep, yep. So I, I've got the itch. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I think top water, man. When the water's warmer like this, like one of the biggest tips I can give people is get out there really early. Like be on the water extremely early. That's one of the sucky things about trout fishing this time of year um and throw that top water i mean this is a great time of year to catch really big trout is on top water plug early in the morning i have my success on that plug until about 8 30 maybe nine o'clock definitely dies all dies off around eight hard but you can definitely still get bites on it but you can you can catch them on jigs and stuff throughout the day we'll go into that but i mean let, let's start out with this like you know late summer speckled trout top water fishing um, what are you looking for in a spot? You said a transitionary area. Let's let's hear kind of what you're looking for, then I'll go over what I like to look for. Um, typically when it's summertime, I'm looking for really deep water that's gonna hold a more consistent temperature throughout the day. Uh-huh. Um, even with the tide change. So I'm looking for deep water to work, but when it starts coming this transition from summer into fall, I'm looking for slightly shallower water, probably that eight nine foot range okay but i'm looking for current movement those fish especially early morning on a high dropping tide there's certain points areas that they're gonna sit and i consistently find them there every year so that's kind of my key to when they're starting to switch into that fall time um you know if it's i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be like a particular thing i'm looking for as far as a structure or like an oyster bar or anything like that um most of the time i'm just looking for that eight to ten foot of water and i'm looking for current flow something that's going to give them somewhere just to hold and that's funneling bait and yeah. that's the big key i think for me when i'm looking to th- especially early mornings throwing top water somewhere that's got a lot of bait action a lot of bait moving around Definitely. 
um, I think seems to be kind of the key of where I'm finding them. Yeah, I think people get nervous um, trout fishing in the summer because they're like, I'm not going to be able to find these fish. They're not here. Um, yeah. But but really, it's just a morning. Like, you can catch them all day long, but you're going to learn the most about where they are the first hour to two hours of the morning from sun up for the first two hours uh, because those fish really start to shut down bite wise as the day progresses in the summer when it's hot, uh, at least yep. here. I mean, in Texas, Louisiana, other places you can catch trout all day long. It seems like I don't know why our fish tend to not feed quite as aggressively midday. Um, it could yep. be, I don't know who knows what it is, but really grinding that first two hours and locating where the fish are will tell you where you need to spend your time blind casting jigs or fishing live shrimp or floating live mullet, you know, and it really helps you kind of figure out, you know, where you, if you get an aggressive blow up from a trout, maybe there was just one there, but I mean, as you know, those fish live together. So there's probably some more there. Probably we should pick it apart with some different colors, different style, soft plastics and whatnot. Um, And I like what you said about current, and points. There's really three things I look for this time of year um, as far as spots. And, and I'm never married to them because these fish move around and they move to where the bait is. But but points, creek mouths, and what I call like washouts. So areas where there's just like a lot of current kind of coming through some structure and kind of just blowing out and lots of different little small eddies and pockets. So uh, it could be like a dock near an inlet or it could be like you know, a, a big dock in the river. It could be, you know, like the rock wall down at Fort Fisher um, where yeah. that water blows through the wall. Um, there's just different areas, and they're not always going to be good. It could be like a jetty. Just different areas where there's big moving water and kind of real boily currents can definitely hold trout. They are hard areas to learn how to fish. Um, definitely. But when you figure it out, it can be very productive. And again, Get there in the morning because the fish move way more and they're way more aggressive early. I mean, you're going to learn if there's fish in an area as, as far as speckled trout go, the best first thing in the morning. So, yep. Um, well, this goes back to like me and you we were talking the other day. You had a trip and you're like, Where'd you catch the trout? I think it was the day after I caught a bunch of trout last weekend. Yeah. And the difference in where you were fishing, like right up against the bank at first. Like, those fish were sitting 10, 15 feet off the bank. They were sitting out in a current seam when I was catching them, you know. Yeah. They were sitting where those two currents were coming together around the point, and anything outside of that wouldn't get touched. Yeah. Um, it's very going true. going back to, you know, top water by 8, thir- I think I talked to you that morning at, like, 8, 15. Yeah. I had one more blow up. That was it. And how many had you had that morning? 10 or 15 blow ups, probably? Yeah, 10 or 15 blow-ups. We had one rip of treble off the top water. I mean, you know, just really solid fishing action that morning. But about that 8.30 time, they started to shut down. And that's when you actually, you were like, well, you know, put a popping cork on. Try something just slightly below the surface. Something that's still showing some action, but, you know, it's kind of natural underneath. So I did a popping cork with the shrimp. And, you know, it didn't stay hot forever, but we picked up another four or five fish that morning. Yeah. So, you know, and definitely learning to switch what you're fishing as you're going through the time, you know, as you're getting later in the morning is a key thing too. Definitely. I think one of the the best parts about speckled trout is one, they're a lot like a bass. Like they're so patternable. If you, if you catch them in a spot that day and you start thinking, okay, where are these, what is, what's going on right here? What is this current doing? Why are these fish here? And you zoom out in your head and you're like, what else is like this? And then you zoom in on a spot and you go there and fish it the same way, you're going to catch fish. I mean, 90% of the time, those fish are so patternable like that. Like bass guys will get as, as crazy as being like, oh, the fish are eating spinner baits on the end of laydowns, like only on the ends of laydowns and six feet of water. Like that's how <laughs> dialed in they, they get. Yeah. And we can get like that on trout too. I mean, I really think we can. I'm not saying all the fish are doing that, but... Uh, as we yep. can start to think about these reasons we're catching fish and, and zooming out to a bigger picture and then zooming back in and being like, okay, these are the spots. This is what I need to do. This is how I need to fish. Uh, I think that's where it takes us to the next level as anglers. Definitely. Um, well, cool. So let's talk a little bit about some baits um, that you like to use this time of year. I think we both agree on the top waters. So let's go through that first. Are there some certain top waters you'd like to throw for trout? I'm all over the place. Um, if most mornings, you know, we got a little bit of breeze and a little bit of chop. So I like either a big one knock 
um, oh, big yeah. one knocker to throw in the mornings. Um, seems to be kind of my go-to. That's what I probably have 75% of in my tackle box. Yeah. I've got some that are lighter. Um, and I'll change out in the day. Or if I'm fishing with somebody else, I'll be make sure I'm throwing a different topwater from Definitely. Me. That's, that's we'll huge. we'll see who's catching more fish if they're keyed in on one or the other. And then I'm like, hey, if you haven't caught a fish in 10 minutes, change it out or, you know, whatever. Um, but I even still, I've got some silent ones that are really just, you know, a silhouette more than anything. Um, Those silent ones are so hard for me to work. I've got, yeah. like, I just mentally <laughs> like the click noise so much. Like when I've got a plug without a bearing or anything in it yep. or, or a ball or anything in it, 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 it hurts me to walk it. I'm like, is this, <laughs> what is going on with this thing? But sometimes the trout love those silent ones. Yeah. And so. I think matching, and this is something we've talked about, I believe in other videos is matching what's going on in the surface with what kind of bait you're throwing. You know, if it's slick, calm, and there's nothing but little mullet V's all over the place, you probably don't want something that's giant, loud, and crazy. Right. It may still work, but you know, you're know you kind of trying to match the hatch for the most part. And Definitely. just the walking pattern of that top water is enough difference that those fish can key in on it. You yeah. know, set it apart from the rest of the school. Definitely. So, it's like match the hatch, but stand out just enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm with you. Those calmer days, sometimes like the... the um, What's the small one? Why am I forgetting? Spook Junior. Like the little Spook Juniors can work really, really well. I've got some painted up over here. I need to epoxy top coat for the season, but got some sweet colors I'm excited to to throw. Um, but yeah, just having a variety of colors and having a variety of sizes. I, I really think you need to pick out three different colors that you like that are different and three different styles that you like and have each of those styles and sizes in, in each color. And if you can go through those those couple of plugs, you can always find what they're going to eat. Yeah. Um, is there some colors that you like in particular for for trout? Typically, I'm throwing natural, you know, a black back, silver sides, kind of a lightish belly. Um, that's kind of my go-to, yeah. especially this time of year and fishing cleaner water. Okay. When I get into dirtier water, I'm looking for either kind of that orange bottom or red bottom um just it's a little bit different of a color um or just straight white cool with either a red head or a chartreuse or something but most of it, i think i've got one of those and it might still even be brand new like straight white is my go-to for the most part do you like um, the bone white or do you like like the the printer paper white I like the bone white, yeah, kind of that like off color. Too. Yeah, like a little yellowish brown in there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Just I'm with something you. you know, it's not, it's not super unnaturally white. I feel like is sometimes can be odd. Yes, yeah, so it's too bright sometimes. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, I'd say my go-to's. You know, I love a golden mullet plug. So any any of that orange belly, gold sides, black back, uh, skitter walk has one. Uh, uh, Hedden has one. Mirror Lure has. Actually, does Mirror Lure have a gold mullet color? I don't know if they do. They might. If I could be wrong. Somebody leave a comment in here and let me know if they got one. Because if they do, I need to buy it. Because now that I think about it, I don't think I have one. Um, I paint up my own custom golden mullet color that I really like. and um, It's a good color. It's just it, it has a little bit of everything as it rolls in the water as you walk the dog. Um, but pink, chartreuse, bone white, and golden mullet are kind of my go-tos. And then I'll always have a couple just, if there's a good looking natural plug, I love picking those up. You know, if it's a mullet or a speckled yep. trout color or a bass color or frog or something like that, I like having a couple of those around. Just a natural kind of, uh, coloration is, is always a good one to throw as well. Like if you don't know what to throw, just pick up a natural one and throw it. That, that's kind of how I always yep. feel if I'm not sure what what's gonna, what they're going to key in on but like early in the morning really early in the morning sometimes those brights like those pinks and and chartreuses can work really well yeah um, and as the sun gets up I, I fish something that's a little darker a little more silhouetted um but then some days it feels opposite you just want that dark silhouette <laughs> in the morning so it's just you got to be able to play around with those plugs i know it sounds so silly yeah. and there's going to be some trout that don't give a rip you just walk a plug across their face and they're going to smack it um yeah but but another thing to talk about with the topwater fishing is like just with 
like we're gonna talk. I mean, we're gonna talk trout a bunch as as the these episodes come over the next couple of months because um, it's me and Michael is one of our big passions. It's Cameron's <laughs> obsessed with it too, and um, with speckled trout fishing. And it, it's just there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to break down. There's a lot of baits to catch them on. There's lots of great rods. There's you know there's so much to learn with speckled trout. Um, but the biggest thing is fish a big bait. Like if you want to catch yep. numbers, you can downsize. But if you want to catch big fish. Always fish a big bait. Always fish a bigger bait. Um, yep. The little, I mean, big fish will eat smaller baits too. But I mean, if you just say, "All right, I'm just throwing big baits for speckled trout from now until December," you will catch some citations. You will because oh, yeah. you know you're fishing um, something that th- those fish aren't going to eat a ton, and they're going to eat those bigger meals. And I've ca- I've caught 14 inch trout on seven inch swim bait, so. I know yeah. that they're not afraid to eat, you know, eat a bigger bait. But if you want to catch numbers, downsize. If you want to catch big fish, fish a little bit bigger stuff. And when the water's warmer, a lot of times they're a little more likely to eat bigger baits. But I'll tell you one thing, that 5-inch diesel minnow from here until December is going to get you some big bites. The 4-inch is yeah. great, but the 5-inch is a really, really awesome bait to fish, um, you know, from here on out. So get you some colors of that. Fish it on a eye strike red fish eye. What is it, the 3 16th? the size i like to fish i'm always so bad with the numbers yeah. three sixteenths i fish a little bit of a quarter or i'll fish the quarter yeah. some especially in this transition period because we're we're fishing a lot of heavy current and z-man's floating you know the quarter ounce sometimes helps get it down to where you need to be once the sun comes up yep um but you just kind of have to play around you know figure out match your jig head and your bait size for sure so. And I think it's the two the two aught that I like on those jigs too. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, that's another thing I always struggle with is hook size and weight. I'm always like, I know the size I want when I look in my box, but I can never remember yep. the numbers. <laughs> so uh, um, that's why well, I never I think, got a job at a tackle shop. Probably <laughs> talking about top water sizes. Um, I mean, most of the time I'm throwing top dog and or top pup whatever it is from mirror lure i'll throw yeah. that a bunch the rapala like skitter walk not the smaller version the bigger version of that is there anything that you get that's just massive like a triple treble or do you try to go for anything really big like that i fish a lot of the full-size spooks like when i really start if i have the day out and i'm top water fishing i'll throw that full-size spook um, gotcha. I'll, I'll upsize the trebles again. I can't remember the exact. Actually, give me a second. I'll tell you. I'm sick and tired of not knowing the number. <laughs> I got it right here in this drawer. I like to fish these. The yeah, they're, 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 all... they're, they're number two VMC in line. These hooks right here. So let me get it. So oh, right here. So that's the. That's the hook I fish for the most part on those. But I'll take the middle hook out and put yeah. two hooks on either end. I didn't used to do that, but Ryan Christofferson from Intercoastal Angler um, kind of preached that pretty hard. The plug walks a little bit better. Um, and what you want to upsize, otherwise you've got a little bit too big of a gap in between the two trebles. Okay. Um, but those – I mean, you'd be surprised. You'll see the little trout come up and smack the mess out of that thing. And you'll hook yeah. them. You'll hook them on it. But those big fish, man, they don't miss it. I mean, they're they're eating it head first. That thing's usually sideways in their mouth. So yeah. you'll be surprised too. Like I had a day with Ryan. I think I've talked about this fish on the podcast before. But it was about it was late August, so we've already passed the time. Um, but we were fishing, and he is really good about like always pick every spot we go to, picking the top water back up and throwing it for about ten minutes. Gotcha. And it was like 1130. It was like 85 degrees out. And he picks his topwater plug up, throws it across some um, some old dock pilings. And it's a spot that big fish have come from and caught a seven and a half pounder on topwater at like 11 o'clock uh, midday. And so Dang. I was sitting there like throwing a little finesse, like 3DS minnow, trying to get like <laughs> just get a bite. And he's like, I'm sticking to the plug and just gets absolutely smashed 11 o'clock. So, I mean, the topwater is a good bait. I mean, it's very hard for me personally to throw a topwater, you know, for hours on end if I'm not getting a bite, but it can be worth yeah. it. And that proved to me that it can be worth it. I've had the, my own scenarios in that that way. More so happening with clients that are more dedicated than myself because I'm like, all right, I'm going to throw something small and finesse and just get a bite. I don't care if he's 12 inches. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but, but sticking to a bigger bait, sticking to a aggressive search bait can oftentimes, you know, produce a larger fish like that. 
A heavy structure right now is a great place to throw top water too. Like you don't think of it, but jetty walls, um, docks mm-hmm. with heavy current. Um, I caught a 24 last week on a five inch diesel minnow um, along a dock with heavy current on it. I was catching flounder and I saw a trout pop some mullet, put on a big swim bait, threw it in there first cast, thump, and, and got him. And then I didn't get any more bites, but I switched to a DOA and fished the DOA a couple times and caught a couple um, smaller gotcha. ones. But don't, don't be afraid of those those bigger baits. I mean, those fish, when the water's yeah. warmer like this, in low light scenarios, uh, they're good to fish. Early morning, late evening, cloudy overcast, midday can also be productive. But, um, but yeah, another good thing, the owner stinger hooks are a great treble to upgrade to. Um, and those VMCs, but the owner stingers, the reason I got those VMCs is they're a little bit cheaper than the owner stingers. Uh, yeah. And I bought a bunch of packs of them for this year and for the plugs that I'm painting. But the owner stinger hooks are extremely, extremely sharp. Um, and so you get those trout that sometimes come up and swat at it and they're, and they're not committing to it. And a lot of times you'll hook them on the outside of the face with those hooks. Um, yep. Redfish, I'd say, you know, rusty hooks, screw it, keep fishing it. You know, it's not that big of a deal because they eat it hard and you can really bury the hook. But with the swatting that you get from the trout where, you know, you've got the plug here and they'll kind of come up and just hit it with the back of their head. Um, sticky, t- tacky hooks are, are definitely nice. Have you have you noticed a hook that you like to fish more on, on some of those hard baits? That's topwaters, marilures, jerk baits, you know, all of that. I normally, like, I'll do the Gamagatsus. Yeah. And either that or i'll buy just some cheap trebles and i switch them out every time i go out on the water yeah like maybe every two trips i'm putting on new trebles um especially once trout season starts getting cranked up and even the same for mirror lures um i think it's the mr17 i will oversize one of the hooks i haven't done it since last fall so i had i don't even can't remember what i do now but i'll oversize one of the hooks just to get it to fall in one direction Uh uh-huh a little quicker so when you're working it you get the pause and it's just enough weight that once it sits there for a second it starts to descend again or you know kind of fall forward um i don't know if it makes a huge difference but it's, de- it's something that i i started trying last year and i mean i was catching fish with it so it didn't hurt me heck yeah but, um, i don't know if you know it made a huge difference in bringing out my numbers or anything i've heard so, of that on um on 17s with that front hook make it put a little bit heavier yeah. hook on there and it'll kind of start to slide off to one side in the front you know left and right and kind of gives it a different action which is cool um, yeah and playing around with hook sizes on there's i mean there's so much to talk about in trout fishing <laughs> um it's crazy like just the we could just talk about hooks on hard baits probably for an hour you know and and yeah um, we couldn't talk about sizes because I wouldn't remember the size that I like. I've got to sit there and like look at my bait and be like, all right, this is the one I want. I just can never remember those stupid numbers. But um, we yeah. won't get into all that because we don't want to jump the gun. We kind of want to stay with what's relevant right now, I guess. But um, let's talk about soft plastics. If you're just going to throw soft plastics, take me through. And I'm talking like it might be a voo shrimp. It might be a trout trick. It, you know, it can be pre-rigged or, you know, unrigged soft plastics. Um. I mean, right now I'm kind of sticking to that four inch, four to five inch diesel minnow, yeah. something with a paddle tail and matching it with, like we were talking earlier, three sixteenths or a quarter ounce. Um, but mainly that's because I'm also trying to target flounder right now. So I want something that's going to get down to the bottom. Um, but it's still got a slow enough fall that when I'm pitching kind of those heavy current banks and points where... I'm looking for trout. It's going to fall slow. It's kind of stay in their face. But once it gets to the bottom, I can keep it there and yeah. be able to work for flounder. So yeah. I haven't quite like switched to our fall trout fishing yet. So I'm still kind of stuck in the flounder and using my flounder fishing as a search pattern, you know? Yeah, to, to find trout. To, to find kind of fishing trout. for them both. Yeah. What is it? What is to, to kind of explain to people what your retrieve is and how it might be different if you're like trying to target both of those fish with the one cast? Um, so at the start of the cast, it's cast it out. As soon as it hits water, close the bell, come tight. Don't touch it. Complete dead stick. Just let it fall. And that'll be my first 10 or 15 cast when I'm in a spot. And I just want that bait to naturally fall and sweep through in the current. And once it hits the bottom and I feel that it's gotten down, then it's, I'll start with, you know, a normal, just twitch, 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 
pause, build up my slack, you know, twitch, twitch, twitch. Um, oh my gosh, I could I, feel the thump right then, like when you just did that. I was like, I want to set the hook. <laughs> uh, I was imagining that bait so well, just falling and, toot, 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 and then the trout just whack. Uh, and then from there, I'm maybe, you know, if I know there's trout there, if I've caught them on top water, you know, and the bite slowed down, I'll start with that. Still keeping an active bait if it. If it's even gone down from there, um, my next, you know, five or so cast, cast it out, still do the dead swing at the beginning. Yeah. And then I do a slow retrieve, constant moving, you know, just something that keeps that paddle tail moving all the way back to the boat. And that's something I'll always fish, especially this time of year, fish your top water back to the boat. Because those fish will sit out in the middle in areas that you don't even think about. Right. So, um... Just make sure you're reeling them all the way back. But anyways, and then from there, I'll try even a faster retrieve. Um, typically, my flounder are coming on the first four or five casts. Anyways, like, you know, I'm power fishing when I'm fishing for flounder. So then I have to kind of step back and, you know, kind of pick it apart a little more when I'm um, sitting in the same spot fishing for trout. But, um, I mean, I, I don't know. The dead stick to me always seems to be kind of the go-to start, and then I just change the retrieve once it gets down on the bottom. Um, but anyways, you got anything that you do differently? Oh man, it's uh, I would say about the same, same retrieve. Okay. And getting back into the baits, there's one that I'm going to talk about on every single episode <laughs> um, because I, even I remind, like I reminded myself the other day of how important this bait is to throw. Um, because I, yeah. I'm thinking right now, trout fishing, all right, mullet, there's so many mullet around. These trout are mostly keyed in on mullet, mostly yeah. keep looking up, eating top water. Well, um, eating swim baits, but you should always have a red flake DOA shrimp tied on at all times because <laughs> <knew> that was coming. <laughs> they will smack the crap out of it no matter what they're eating. And, and like the bite had gone pretty cold in an area. Um, I was fishing with clients and I was like, let me try something tied on. I was just sitting back. They were fishing and I tied something on. I was like, let me try this out. Threw it out there right where they had made about 25, 30 casts. And I mean, let it let it dead stick for three seconds and just whoop, like such a smack on that, that shrimp and set the hook. And it was like the best trout of the, out of the area. I tied them on. Um, Red Flake DOA shrimp went to the next spot. Bang, 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 bang. Or sorry, at that spot, bang, 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 bang. Caught another four or five. And then that kind of died out. I was like, let's run around the corner. I got another big point, a lot of current. We got there. They really couldn't fish it there. It was a hard, it's a hard bait to fish in really heavy current. It was blowing against the current. And so it was like, a, that bait's so light. And so they were throwing swim baits. They were catching some. So I, I, we're, we're about to leave. And I picked that thing up and fired it out there and broke off a nice one. Like ate oh, it, man. came tight on him. Head shake broke it off. I'm glad I broke him off, honestly, because it was a really <laughs> nice fish, and I would have felt terrible if I caught it in front of him. I was like, oh, yeah, it was a good one. I think my leader was messed up, but I just laid into him, and I think I had some nicks from some oysters from bouncing a swim bait. Um, yeah. And so always check that this time of year because you will hook big trout this time of year, and if you're flounder fishing too and you're in the oysters, if you have a nick, cut it yeah. and retie. Cut it. I mean, I'll put on three or four feet of leader, when I'm flounder fishing and trout fishing and just cut, 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 cut it down. I mean, I, I don't like casting through the guides, but also I don't want to retie my uni to uni all the time. So it's easier to just cut yeah. that nick out and uh, and go to town there. But the red flake DOA shrimp, that's a do nothing, like you're saying. Throw it out there, reel your slack out, let it fall. I'll twitch it a little bit, but it's more so just to make sure that something hasn't grabbed it because it's like it's so light as it's yeah. swinging. Um, and I like the big red flake DOA, so – Definitely. There's two sizes. I like to fish the bigger one. I'll definitely fish both. They both get eaten. But um, the, and there's another the H and H. I think makes a red flake as well that I that, that gets eaten, but it doesn't sink quite like the DOA does. Um, that yeah. DOA kind of sinks like a mirror lure, where it stays, um, you know, parallel to the bottom and kind of just spins around like this, and it just looks really, really good. Um, yep. I don't know why they love that stupid bait so much. I need to stop. That's one I need to stop talking about on here because that one saves my day so often. <laughs> I will say, too, this is the time of year where the water clarity is about to start changing. Yeah. And when you're targeting trout, you know as well as I do, it's time to start dropping leader sizes. Yeah. Like, 
during the summer when the water's dirty, nasty, off color. We're getting thunderstorms every day or every two days. I'm I'm a lot of days I'm throwing thirty pound tests, twenty to twenty five, thirty pound tests, somewhere in that range. Right. And you know, I'm just hogging fish in. It does you know, I can bury the hook, especially that time of year when you got big red fish. Yeah, but and you're fishing around a lot of oysters. It's nice to get be able to get away with it. Yeah. But this time of year, as you are starting to drop your leader size, a lot of our big redfish are starting to kind of show up at this time period, too. Right. So, you know, just be prepared to either have to move the boat or, you know, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to end up losing a fish. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's, that's very true. Sure. Um, my mom, the other day, she got hooked up to something, and I cut back. I think I was only throwing, like, 15 pounds ass, and it never stopped. <laughs> it almost dumped a full 2500 and i couldn't do anything i couldn't get power poles up i couldn't you know everything else where you were fishing through. that had to have been a bull like thinking about that big point like i know that yeah. was a bull red fish in there exactly it had to have been so yeah that's that's tough it's like you want to <laughs> tighten your drag down but it's like all right i'm either gonna lose them from running too far or i'm gonna tighten them down too much and break them off so um, Yo. yeah that's a tough one that's a very tough one um, well, cool. I think we've, we've talked about top water. We've talked about soft plastics. I really don't throw much for hard baits in our area right now. Not that in other areas it's not very productive right now, like up in the Pamlico Sound, up in the Chesapeake Bay. Hard baits are our money right now. So if you're fishing different areas, I apologize. Um, we're fishing more heavy current right now. I don't really fish those, those low current areas until later. But definitely throw your MR-17s, throw your jerk baits, um, throw your – oh, I'm going to bring that up in just a second. Um, throw your jerk baits and, and, and go to town with those. Definitely check out Bad Monkey uh, Baits. He's a custom lure builder here in North Carolina and builds some really awesome twitch baits. Some like oversized twitch baits, bigger than your 17s, bigger than your um, 27s. I mean, he has a variety of sizes, but really cool colors. He's got some awesome handmade baits that catch some very large trout. Um, and it's always fun to catch them on a custom bait like that, a handmade bait. Um, especially trout fishing. There's something about trout fishing that's like there's this artisan feel to it where you want to, you know, kind of go a little zen when you're trout fishing. So, um, but one thing I want to talk about that I'm, I just picked up a couple and I'm going to start fishing them. I would like you to as well, Mike, so we can report back. But my buddies in Texas just keep talking about how important a square bill crankbait is for redfish. It's um, funny you said that because I was sitting here thinking, don't be afraid to go into your bass tackle box and pull out those lip twitch baits and crank baits and yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. So. Um, I, I don't know about a trout. I feel like it's a pretty aggressive bait for a trout. I'm sure they'd eat it. Um, I feel yeah. like reel or reel and pause and let that thing float up. I feel like that's when the trout would eat it. But let's yeah. both fish on our next two trips out. Let's fish a, a square bill crank bait a good bit and see if we can get some red yeah. fish on it. Um, it's just so loud and knocks around. I, I know they're pretty weedless against trees and stuff and, they, and and stumps, but I wonder how they're doing oysters. That'll be the the true test. Yeah. The nice thing is you stop, it floats. So right. it, it should should come out. At least if you jiggle it a little bit, it should come on out. Definitely. But I think that's a great bait. But Man, I think that's a good start for our trout fishing. I mean, do you have any other, any other things you want to hit on there as far as trout fishing go? Um... I mean, honestly, we could sit here for the next three hours and talk trout fishing. So I think, like you said, for right now, deeper water, um, current, you know, and keep fishing those same baits, the big baits, but definitely focus in on top water to find them in the mornings. Um, locate where the fish are, um, I think is kind of the, the big key points to what we're doing right now to be successful. Yeah. And if you're not super comfortable with like a walk the dog style like stick bait or hard bait, uh, pick up a wake bait. And if you even if you are, throw a wake bait as well. I've, I've caught some really nice trout on wake baits this summer, and um, they're just cast and retrieve. So I did a video on wake baits. It's on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't thrown a wake bait and you want to go check it out and kind of figure out, all right, what is this all about? This looks like a bass lure. Um, go check that out. It'll kind of explain how to catch trout and redfish on that. But a wake bait is another great, great bait um, to throw. What were you going to say, Mike? um cadence cadence top water. yeah what's yours you know, how do you how do you work it versus you know 
I'm a slow, slow fisherman. When it comes to summertime top water, it's don't, 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 you know. But I try to stay very, very consistent because I feel like most of my redfish bites come on a very consistent walk, walk the dog back to the boat, you know. Definitely. But with the trout, are you doing anything different? Are you speeding it up? You pausing it? Man, for myself, I'll pause it on and off um with clients i kind of just get them to i try to get them dialed in on one cadence one retrieve um yeah. whatever seems there they kind of seem to gravitate to whether it's a little quicker one for some people a little slower one for other people um and just keep them walking it because i'm like all right you're going to catch trout and redfish on this walk here um don't pause it unless i tell you to pause it kind of thing and so i mean yeah. sometimes we're trout fishing i'm like all right you want to pause it or if it gets swirled you know, stop it, yep. and and they they'll they'll get swirled by a redfish and stop the plug, and the redfish won't come back, or thinking it was a trout, and and so I, I kind of try to just keep them walking the plug because trout and redfish will both eat a plug that never stops and is coming right back to the boat, but you start to lose redfish's interest if you start pausing the plug and stopping it, and letting it sit. There's times for it. I think it's more beneficial to be dialed and to, and to know when to pause a plug, when to speed it up, when to slow it down, but. If you don't know what to do, just keep that plug walking steady. Just click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. It's kind of how you want to do it. Rod tip down, low into the left. Your reeling is just to keep the slack out and just bounce that rod tip about four inches. And that's how you walk the dog. Walk them all day long like that. <laughs> um, well, sweet. I think that's a good, way, a good place to stop, guys. We're going to have a lot of trout episodes for you. We're going to bring on some great guests. We're going to talk, me and Mike and, and Cameron are going to talk speckled trout a bunch, and uh, we're going to get down and dirty with the speckled truth. That's, I, that's definitely a stolen stolen punchline from the speckled truth. Or not a punchline, <laughs> but we are not the speckled truth. That's that's Chris Bush. Awesome podcast. If you haven't checked that out, go check out the speckled truth. He's a great dude down in Texas that catches monster trout and helps y'all catch monster trout. But um, we will be sharing some truths about speckled trout as well on this podcast. So, guys, thanks for checking it out. Mike, thanks as always for jumping on here with me. Mike's helping me with the Instagram because, as you all know, I've gotten a little lazy on there. Um, and, and Mike and Cameron and I, we're just we're going to keep this thing going. So um, if you have anything you want to hear about trout fishing, please send in your questions. Any other fall or transitionary you know, time frame fishing questions, which is kind of what I'm calling this era we're moving into now where – everything's changing and shifting definitely shoot them over happy to answer any questions that you'll have uh, any topics for the podcast we'll definitely uh listen to those and and answer them or, or do a whole podcast about what you want to learn um, but guys we love doing this we love hearing y'all's feedback if you're enjoying the podcast um definitely give us a rating on itunes or any of the other podcast platforms um, also just let us know shoot us a, a dm on instagram or facebook and um, shoot us a text message it's just really encouraging that's what encourages us to keep going is when you're like hey i've you know i, I, I listened to your podcast i saw this I, I applied it and it worked thank you all so much like um it's not us we're just sharing the the, the fails and the successes that we've learned <laughs> over time but um it fires fun. us up to help y'all catch fish so just keep us posted um and uh keep encouraging us and we'll keep encouraging you <laughs> and we will see y'all in the next one later